The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. From the Gospel of Matthew, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Well, today we gather to venerate the merits of the saints. Who are your favorite saints, and what are their merits? My favorite saint is Drew Brees. My favorite merits of his are victories, especially Super Bowl victories. But seriously, the prayer book focuses on the bond of fellowship and the communion shared between all members of Christ's mystical body. Be they on earth, awaiting glory in the intermediate state, or shining as stars in heaven. The Collect for All Saints, from before the prayer book, focuses on their merits, their deeds, and the virtues within them. It goes like this, Almighty and everlasting God, who in one solemnity has given unto us to venerate the merits of all thy saints, we beseech thee that at the intercession of so great a multitude, Thou wouldst bestow on us who call upon thee the abundance of thy mercy. Perhaps the most venerated merit in the lives of those early Christians during the time of great gospel fervor as well as persecution was their faithfulness and perseverance through times of struggle. Those early struggles were chiefly with a hostile culture and state around them. The Feast of All Saints began as the Feast of All Martyrs. The commemoration, originally in May, dates from about the year 610 in Rome, when the Pantheon was converted into a Christian church, dedicated now to Mary and all the martyrs. The pagan idols were removed, and the whole building was cleansed and exercised, and the idols were replaced with the bones of the martyrs from the Roman catacombs. Abbot Granger described it so well in his masterpiece, The Liturgical Year, quote, When Rome had completed the conquest of the world, she dedicated to all the gods, in token of her gratitude, the Pantheon, the most durable monument of her power. But when she herself had been conquered by Christ, Invested by him with the empire of her souls, she withdrew her homage from vain idols and offered it to the martyrs, for they, praying for her as she slew them, had made her truly eternal. I've always loved the Feast of All Saints. I was even ordained at All Saints in Fort Worth. Since I first heard it, the All Saints hymn, Who Are These Like Stars Appearing?, has been one of my favorites. But the fourth stanza has always been a little bit of a puzzle. The first three stanzas talk about the saints and the martyrs fighting worldliness and wearing white robes of righteousness and crowns of merit. And then we hear this. These are they whose hearts were riven, sore with woe and anguish tried, 
who in prayer full oft have striven with the God they glorified. Now their painful conflict over, God has bid them weep no more. The saints whose hearts were spiritually torn apart by woe and anguish that came through their strife with God in prayer, through struggling, contending with God in prayer, wrestling with God, fighting with God. These are the saints, not the enemies of God, but his chosen. Now, this is a little confusing because it seems counterintuitive. We are obliged, of course, to fight courageously against sin, the flesh, and the devil. At the same time, St. Paul called strife within the church a sin. Proverbs 20, verse 3, tells us that it is honorable to stay aloof from strife. How then can strife and strife with God be a means of sanctification? Well, first of all, consider, is your life, your prayer life, characterized by any kind of struggle? Not the struggle to remember to pray or something like that, but the kind of woe and anguish that comes through wrestling with God in prayer. If not, maybe that's one of the things standing in the way of you becoming a saint. This doesn't make sense yet. Let me put it another way. As a child, did you ever struggle with your parents? As a parent, did you ever struggle with your children? Some of those struggles came by sin, but some didn't. They were what you might call growing pains. Can you imagine them or you growing up with no struggles at all? You know from experience that struggle can be a good thing, not necessarily pleasant, but beneficial. The opposite would be to give up, throw in the towel, which of course can be a bad thing. And that struggle doesn't necessarily make you enemies. In fact, we often struggle and even fight with those we love the most. In fact, we're more likely to struggle with them because we care. We're invested. Certainly, we would not care so much if it were a struggle with someone you didn't also deeply love. You could just walk away from it and say, well, who who cares? St. Teresa of Calcutta struggled with God in prayer most of her life. She had a profoundly moving experience of God when she was young, but felt entirely alone and abandoned by God the rest of her life. And yet that struggle in prayer bore fruit in the way that God's love was manifested through her to other people all of those years. It came through her struggle to find God's love again, to find that feeling again by contemplating the face and the heart of Jesus. Mother Teresa's namesake, St. Teresa of Lisieux, the little flower of Jesus, described her own similar experience as a night of nothingness, nothingness. And she too kept at it, fighting with her Lord through the darkness, fighting to find him. Most of us tend to think of the saints as people really in tune, always in constant communion with God. Therefore, everything they do is a little bit easier because of this connection. This shows that not only do they have it as tough as we do, but sometimes, oftentimes perhaps, they have it tougher. Do we find such a struggle in the Bible? Yes, we do, very famously in the story of Jacob from Genesis 32. If you remember some of the background, he had stolen his brother Esau's birthright, not just once, but twice. Jacob fled from his brother Esau, fearing his wrath. Later in life, Jacob's circumstances led him back home to his family. He didn't know what to expect when he got home. Would Esau seek revenge? He certainly couldn't blame him for that. As evening came on, he camped by the Jabbok River, An angel of the Lord appeared. He was named Penuel, God's face. 
Jacob didn't know who this was at first. Jacob wrestled with him all through the night, no holds barred. Typical of his own life, it was a constant struggle without any prevail. When the sun was dawning, it was time for this person to leave. The angel crippled Jacob to walk away from him. Something told Jacob he'd been wrestling with more than just some ordinary man. So he wouldn't let go. He would not let go. He held on for dear life and said, before you go, bless me. The angel said, well, what is your name? He replied, Jacob, which means usurper or cheater. The angel said, not anymore. You will be called Israel, which means struggle or persevere with God, because you've striven with God and man and have prevailed. Out of that struggle in the early light of dawn, a nation was born. Israel crossed the Jabbok and was reconciled with his brother Esau. Israel fathered 12 sons, each of whom had their own families, which later became the 12 tribes of Israel. Out of the struggles of sinners with God in prayer, saints are born. Our struggle with God is fruitful if we both want the same thing, our holiness. It is a struggle to be together, a struggle for something better that leads to God's blessing upon us. Let us pray. O God, the King of saints, we praise and magnify thy holy name for all thy servants who have finished their course in thy faith and fear, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and for all other thy righteous servants, known to us and unknown. And we beseech thee that, encouraged by their examples, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we also may be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, through the merits of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.